Our call to confession this morning is also our Old Testament lesson from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. Now I'll paraphrase this lesson out of our lectionary because it's a familiar story to us. It tells the story of the newly freed Israelites growing impatient while Moses communed with God on the mountaintop and then deciding to craft idols out of their gold jewelry that they could worship. Moses' brother, Aaron, built um, an altar before the golden calf, and he called for a day of feasting and festival in which initially the people seemed to revel and take great comfort. But it infuriated God. I mean, how could these people be so callous, so ignorant, so insensitive, so fickle and faithless? Leave me alone, God says to Moses, so that my wrath may burn hot against them and consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. God was ready to shake the dickens out of these people. Like a child shaking an etch-a-sketch and just doing away with everything that God had created. It would be the flood 2.0. But Moses said, why should we give the Egyptians, the opportunity to see you as a wicked God who would rescue your people from suffering and slavery only to destroy them yourself. Turn from your wrath and do not bring disaster on your people. And God's mind was changed about bringing disaster against these people. How much of the disaster that we face in this world is the result of our own inability to let go of anger? God had every right to be angry, but ultimately chose to be faithful to the promises of prosperity made out of love for God's people. Trusting God's faithfulness to us, and God's love for us. Do we dare be honest about our own uncomfortable feelings, inviting the Spirit to speak to us and change our heart and mind? That is why we are called to confess, to confront where we are and consider where God calls us to be. God has no intent to abandon us in the wilderness and every intent to lead us home. Trusting God's guiding grace, let us confess our sins. Holy and just God, you are right to be angry with us. We can be so fickle and shallow and selfish at times, crafting idols of our own anger, sacrificing our sanity at its altar, reveling in thoughts of revenge. We turn from your love and our calling to share it with others, refusing to sacrifice our pride and rebelling against reconciliation. We are not better off without you, no matter how clever and crafty the tempter may be who tells us otherwise. Forgive us for the times our own lives have borne witness to the way the world is, rather than bearing witness to the way you intend it to be. Help us to understand the hurt we cause in our callousness, both to you and to our neighbor, and also to ourselves. Guide us 
to healthier ways of healing from hurt, more gracious ways of growing through grief, more loving ways of living, that our brokenness in the light of your grace might reflect the light of Christ's own death and resurrection, love's crucified and risen light. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shalom is a state of health and wellness between God and creation, but it's also a state of health and wholeness between all creatures. Shalom is reconciliation on both the cosmic axis and on the earthly axis, which I am reminded of when I look at the cross. The cross bears a reminder that God's love for us is greater than God's anger with us. A symbol of shalom and the foundation of our forgiveness. Friends, know that you are forgiven. Be at peace. Shalom.